How many of you have heard that text before? So we've heard this text, we've read this text. Many of us are reading through the book of Matthew, meditating upon its principles throughout this month. And I'm so glad that we're learning new things because we're reading the text in new ways because we're a different person now than we were yesterday. And so God has a new word for us even today. When I read this text, I think of this math teacher who was trying to teach some new concepts to the children in her class. And the thing that she was trying to teach was even and odd numbers and to see if they got the concept down. And she noticed a student over to her right that was not paying attention. So what do teachers do when a student isn't paying attention? They call on him, right? So she says, little Johnny, tell me, what is 2, 4, 38, and 44? And Johnny said, hmm, NBC, CBS, ESPN, and the Cartoon Network. <laughs> now, Johnny was indeed paying attention, just not to the things that the teacher wanted, right? Well, in our text today, Jesus has a message that he's trying to teach us, and key to the message is pay attention to God. In the first part of our text, starting in verse 3 and then going to verse 9, the key to understanding this text are the words that stand at the very beginning, behold, and the word that stands at the end, hear. Behold, hear. Look and listen. Look at what God is doing in your life. Listen to the word of God. Be attentive to what God is doing. And then Jesus tells us that's going to produce fruit. It'll produce the fruit of, of loving behavior. And just as God then provides the seed of God's word into our life, the fruit will be produced 100 Fold, some 60-fold and some 30-fold, but God is going to do something with the seed of God's word that comes in our life if we are attentive. And I think it's very important for us to note that as Jesus shares these words, Matthew sets up these words in verses 1 through 3 and describes how Jesus came out of the house and spoke to the people out on the streets and on the seaside. Because God is not so much concerned that we're attentive to what God is doing necessarily just here, but God is concerned that we are attentive to what, what he is doing everywhere. Jesus wants us to be attentive to the Spirit of God as we walk along the way, as we lie down and as we rise up, as we get in our cars or hop in our boats. God is there. And so we have this scene of Jesus presenting not a sermon on the mount this time, but this is a sermon on the boat. Jesus sees these people on, the, on the, the shore side. They're crowding him, and so he mounts a boat like a pulpit, and he tells the people that God rains down refreshing kind of seed upon them, and they need to just water that seed and let it sink into the rich soil of their soul and produce something meaningful. And after Jesus gives us this lesson, then he tells us again, and the way that Matthew presents this to us is he tells us in verses 10 through 17 that the disciples come to Jesus and say, Jesus, why is it that you speak in stories all the time? And I love the translation that New Testament scholar Dale Bruner has of Jesus' response. He says these words, you're looking on, but you are really not looking in. You are listening but you're not really standing under. Those are Dale Bruner's translations of the whole understanding of understanding, standing under. When we think of understanding something, don't we oftentimes think of a mastery of a subject? When we understand it, we've got it, we've mastered it. What Jesus is telling his disciples here is that you really understand something when you stand under the lessons of the master. It's like we need to plant ourselves like a tree by, 
springs of living water, as the psalmist says in Psalm number one. And then we'll produce fruit. So he says, stand under the very authority of God's word, and then we'll create this fruit. And then, a third time, Jesus then reiterates the importance of standing under and understanding God's word when he gives an explanation of this parable of the sower and the seeds that he gave in his sermon on the boat. And and in this explanation, he tells us that there's different kinds of listeners to God's word. Some of us might be busy listeners. Some of us might be shallow listeners. Some of us can be choked out listeners, and some of us will truly be attentive listeners. And Jesus is encouraging us to attune ourselves to listen to God wherever we go. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to avoid being busy listeners. Jesus talks about a seed that is thrown on a pathway. And the way I look at this text is is there is God's word that goes out in the world, and yet how many people really let it sink in? Or how busy do we tend to be just going here, traveling there, going back and forth in our lives, and not really attuning to God's word in our life? Well, we can kind of be like that path that is just trod down where the seed of God's word can't really sink in. Some of us just get so, so busy. I know that I've been in pastoral ministry for long enough, I must say, that I've seen a good number of people that just live busy lives and might even be accomplished, but for some reason, they never deal with the ultimate truth of life. I did a funeral in New Jersey several years ago, and the patriarch of this wonderful family passed away, and I'll never remember the looks of all the family members as they came up to the casket and looked in the casket to pay their final regards. As each one looked inside the casket at the dearly beloved who had passed, they just grieved with utter despair. The man was 98. He's not going to live forever. And yet there was this utter despair in their faces as if, how can we continue to live? And I'm not saying that we Christians don't grieve, but we don't grieve as those who have no hope. For our hope is in the one who has come and shared about the kingdom of heaven, a life that begins now and lasts for eternity. And some people will just go through life in the midst of the busyness, and they'll never get that message. And what Jesus says is that we are then susceptible to be plucked up by the evil one. You see, when disaster hits, how well are we prepared to deal with a disaster? This family, in their grieving, was not prepared. Their life was so busy and accomplished that they never taken time to really think about soul concerns. Jesus says some of our lives can be that way. And then Jesus warns about another kind of listening. It's shallow listening. It's like the seed that is dropped out on the soil, and it takes root, and up springs good fruit, happy happy lives, but then nothing else is produced. It just stops right there. And I think that one of the things that, that becomes in the church a bit of a scandal is what Reinhold Niebuhr called unbelieving believers and half-believing non-believers. And I think the biggest scandal is not so much the half-believing unbelievers, but the unbelieving believers. Because if we really truly believed, wouldn't it make a difference in our life? And yet the history of Christianity sometimes condemns our very faith. You look at Bible-believing Christians here in America and the very presence of the institution of slavery. You look at Christian Europe and hundreds of years of crusades and a whole generation of Holocaust in the midst of that Christian environment. 
You look at Reformed Christianity in South Africa in the presence of apartheid. And the history of Christianity can be downright depressing. Jesus said it would be that way. Plenty of people will hear the word and won't produce fruit. Shouldn't be a surprise to us. If you look at a Christian and say, well, that's the biggest evidence for not being a Christian. Well, Jesus said it was going to happen. We can expect it. He says one-fourth might respond, but I want to be within that quarter of people. I want to respond to the good news in my life. Now, Jesus also talks about another kind of listening that we can sometimes engage in. It's what is called choked-out listening. And I actually participated in this personally this week. Choked out listening. The way that I had the worries of the world and the concerns of worldly things kind of impact me and kind of choke out the life is I was all alone this past week in my house. My wife left me for the week. There's this cute little baby in Santa Barbara. And so, so she went to see this grandbaby. And she took the dog we were watching of our other son to go see this new baby too. So I was all alone. And one of the things that you might not know about me is I'm a little bit of a political hound. I love watching these political shows and, and I, love, I love watching the contests between these various candidates. And I'm just so apolitical. I just find it kind of like a, a, a sports enthusiast watching teams but not really having a dog in the hunt. And so one night I went to bed and I, I loaded up this podcast called All Things Political on my phone. And when I went to sleep, I heard the voice of Donald Trump in the distance. <laughs> and it just, it just rang through. And, and, and then all these programs just kept on going through throughout the night. And I wake up at 6 in the morning, and there's Hillary Clinton talking to me all night long. They're talking about the worries of the world and all the concerns of life. And, and as I got into my day, it's kind of like my joy was just choked out. Some of us just need to turn off the TV set and open our minds and hearts to the Word of God. And I learned that kind of the hard way by a miserable day having had that go on all night long. I didn't have my wife there to take her elbow and jam it into my side to wake me up and say, turn off the radio. And that cute little dog wasn't there to lick me in the face and wake me up. Sometimes we need a good licking to wake us up and to tune our mind to God's word. Now, the theologian Karl Barth once said, it's so important for us to read the Bible in one hand and have the newspaper in another. And I think that that is important. But when we read the Bible, it's like it's in this hand and the newspaper's down here. That's the call that Jesus is encouraging us to do. Look, listen, attune your ears, focus your eyes on the very word of God and absorb God's teachings for us. Now there is a season in the Christian calendar that we have a designated time as a church to listen to God's word in a special way. It's really a season of accelerated spiritual development. It's the season that we call Lent. And one of the things that I want us to think about as we consider Lent coming up is how can we take this season of Lent as a church family and as individuals and as individual families and use this time to be attentive to God's word, to let it grow deeper into our lives, to produce more and more fruit of love and joy. What are some steps that we can do that might encourage that? Here's a few ideas for us. As we prepare to move into Lent here in several weeks, how about making a commitment every week to be here in church? You know, sometimes things happen. We can't be in church. But as much as we can, Let's make a dedication. This is the Lord's Day, the Christian Sabbath, that we'll be here in church, and it'll be a solid commitment that we make. Because, and then here in church, 
what we're going to do is we're going to look at the theme from 1 Corinthians, the love chapter in the Bible. This is 1 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians. Sorry. <laughs> but this is, this is um, a theme that we're going to look at God's, God's principles for loving relationships. And if you can't be here in church, one of the things that I encourage us to do is just catch it um, somewhere, somewhere else during the week. Come stop by the um, office and get a copy of the sermon or look online. It's, it's published online on our website or on our Facebook page on Sunday afternoon. So just take a look at the sermon and, and then unite together with us as God's people, first thing. Second thing I encourage you to do is consider being in a small group Bible study where we look at the text we're studying in Scripture in church and then we talk together with a few other people in a small Bible study group, group of eight to 10, maybe 12 people. How many of you have ever been in a study group like that before? Raise your hand. Good number of you, maybe half of you here, maybe a little bit more. One of the things I'd like us to consider is make a recommitment to be a part of a group like that during Lent, and we'll provide you several times during the week that you can sign up to be in one of those groups. But you can, even now, start organizing with other people to form a group of your own. And we'll give you the material that you can just share. And you can meet at your own convenient time. But make a commitment during this time of Lent to be attentive to God and to open yourself to growing in some new ways. Third thing, um, Gary mentioned earlier that um, we are encouraging people to pray. One of the things, in, in addition to sharing your own prayer con concerns and needs here in church, one of the things we invite you to do is share prayers that have been meaningful to you. I've had already this week, have, I've had like five or six people send me emails with copies of prayers that are meaningful to them. And we're going to be sending those out and sharing those prayers during the Lenten season and encouraging one another in that way. And then another thing that we encourage you to do is as we prepare for Lent, we're asking people to take pictures of our stained glass window here. And this can be a spiritual exercise because when you take a camera in your hand and you look for something that is of meaning to you and you take a picture of it and then we celebrate together with you by placing that on the front cover of our bulletin during the Lenten season, one of the things that we're encouraging you to do is just tune your mind to being attentive to God's presence everywhere because you can find beautiful light and beautiful messages when we go from these four walls and, and you can see it throughout the days and weeks. And so we encourage you to just live life in an attentive way. Be mindful of God's living presence among us. And then, in addition to doing that, one of the things that we're going to do here in Lent is we're going to have an organ recital series on Thursday afternoons during Lent at Actually, it's in the, early, the late morning at 11.30 to 12, Thursdays. And what we encourage you to do is come out midweek like this and listen to a little bit of scripture and just take some time to reflect on God's beauty as we sit in this wonderful sanctuary and listen to sacred music and invite people to be a part of it. These are some ways I'm suggesting that we as a church family can listen, can look, can behold and hear, these are some ways that we can tune our minds and our hearts to God's rich word. And it's my great hope and my prayer that as a result of this spiritual journey we are on as God's family, this will be more and more the place where God's love meets your life.